So you guys, listen, we are live in Atlanta and the big purpose behind this, honestly, is to actually talk to people, get their real experiences, their real thoughts. If you don't get out of the office and come and talk to the people who really have the real experiences, you're doing yourself a disservice. So this is our street interviews, you guys. I think it's a great, great opportunity to find out what people really think about policing. Uh, and what better to do it than in the city of Atlanta? We are near the CNN building. Um, we're gonna have a tough conversation about police reform and what that looks like. Mother of two amazing uh, young black men. So as a former CO and okay. actually seeing what goes on in the prison system, and I feel like it's very well, uh, you know, the school to prison pipeline that goes on as well. Right. So I think, I don't, as far as reform, it's basically just listening to what's, listening to the voices. Okay. And going, What do you mean voices? What do you mean by that? I feel like sometimes as black men, the voice is not heard. Okay. Really, I, I think the problem is the disconnect between the, the people and, okay. and, the, and the police force. Um, it, it, I, I think people are, from the beginning, like from children, they grow up uh, seeing the divide they see themselves as one side and the other side as, you know, the opposition. Like I was uh, pulled over the other day uh, under suspicion of stealing catalytic converters. <laughs> and I was I was like wearing a button down shirt, like yeah. dry, nice clothes coming from work. Okay. And uh, like if you're stealing catalytic converters, you're going to be dirty. covered up and That's right. dirty. That's right. Probably not wearing that. And uh, how, how well? How, how was the officer? Was he was he professional? Was he respectful? Or the first the first officer was very uh, professional. He was a city cop, okay. and uh, he was outside of his jurisdiction. But okay. my description matched, and so they called out like four county officers. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. So you were racially profiled, <laughs> right? Basically, no, it was it was a truck. It was oh, my truck. Okay, 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 okay. It just so happens I had a, a, a best friend who, um, he grew up to be a like a, a, a police sergeant, lieutenant, but even before that, I mean, I don't know whether i have never been in the circles or, I mean, I, I, I've had a couple of run-ins, but nothing, nothing too crazy that would make me uh, hate law okay. enforcement okay. The, the way some have. And then this big old bald dude walks up like, You need to tell me the truth right now, son. <laughs> he says, what, what are you doing? Where are you coming from? And why are you here now? Like if you were in the ear of politicians, what would you tell them that would have a big impact in reference to changing the system? Like what, what direction do we go in? Um, what things do you need to point out? Just anything off the top of your head from your personal experience. I feel like as far as like nonviolent offenders, I feel like we are, black men are more incarcerated than our other counterparts. Okay. So I feel like just even, you know, just starting there, um, as well as like um, the stereotype and targeting. I feel like we, black boys get targeted, even with like the Trayvon Martin situation. Right. So I don't understand why it is such a, a issue where I'm not going to say like they're scared of us, but when they see our skin, our skin color, we become a threat. I was like, I'm just coming from work, just got some Taco Bell. He was like, you need to think about that one more time, because I got witnesses and I got oh camera. I got, I got a camera, cameras all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was like, I'm telling you the truth. It's like whatever. Okay, okay. He's, he goes off for a few minutes. He comes back. He's like. We're gonna need to search this vehicle. Now we can wait 30 minutes to get a warrant from the cameras, or you can go ahead and let me do it now. And like, I know they're fishing, and right. I should have, I knew my rights, but I shouldn't have let them do that. Okay. I get it so much because I see it a lot, especially even in the prison system, right. where a lot of black men are also mistreated. Yeah. So. So let me ask you, do you think, do you think a big solution would be to have more representation? Yes. Um, of black people in the, okay, well that's the challenge, right? We've talked about this a lot, is that we need more representation within our community, but how do we fight that stigma that a lot of people notice when it comes to being black, we get, we get called names, we're in so we're called sellouts. So then how do we fix that problem? Like what, what do you think will be a good uh, remedy to that solution to get, to encourage black people to get in the profession to have that impact? Actually, I, I did actually apply for the, uh, police department but that was uh that was a that came later on but growing up if I saw more more um if I interacted with more African-American police officers that were actually telling me what it's like to be a cop or talking about the 
uh, the lifestyle right. that um, that you could that you could live. Uh, you know, when you're a kid, you really don't right. really understand those things. You wanna you wanna shoot for the stars. You wanna be a celebrity. You wanna right. be this or right. or some kids they wanna be um, they wanna be in the streets. But um, the sheriff of that county is a really crooked dude, and I mean mm. he takes bribes and everything. And oh, hold on. Do you want to do you want to shout out that county at all? Or, or listen, this this is what let me let me just say this. This is what this is about, right? Having sharing people's real experiences that they have with law enforcement and then also talking about what needs to change. For those who don't know, and I, I didn't tell you, I'm former law enforcement, right? So so Russell doesn't know. And I'm advocating to bring about change, right? Because that isn't fair. That's not okay. Right. And he does have rights, like we all do as citizens, and we want to discuss those things that need to change. And so he's saying, hey, listen, these officers try to finesse us out of our out of our freedoms, and that's not okay. Um, how do you think he should have, the officer should have handled that situation? Because you cooperated just simply because you didn't want any any trouble. Right. But what do you think would have been a fair way for the officer to, to handle you in a more professional way? The first cop was very professional. He okay. said, if it was up to me, I would have let you go by now. Mm -hmm. But since it's out of my jurisdiction, they need to come and do their thing. Okay. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. I, I get it. Okay. Um, and then the second cop, they had no right to try to get me to search my vehicle. They were fishing. You know, I, I think the problem is just just the history, yeah. just the history of, of the police force. It's like this, um, that that you know, it is. It's the brotherhood. We we've seen it documented on shows sure. and TV. Like now, people saying uh, defund the police. I, I personally, I don't understand that. I don't understand defund the police. But you can see the um, you can see the shift in and yes. how police are are doing doing their jobs. Like oh. Uh, oh, you want to hold us accountable, and you're going you're to act like you don't respect us and things like that. So just watch. You heard of the situation going on in Chicago from last weekend with the riots, with the teens. Did you, you hear about that? All right. So what are your thoughts in reference to how, how can we fix that situation? The teens are all over the place in Chicago. Of course, a lot of them are, are black kids we've seen on, on the news, the media. What are, your, what are your thoughts to that? Is there anything that we could do to, to reverse that problem? <laughs> I feel like it starts at home. Right. Um, that was a lot of kids, though. Yeah. That's a lot of homes. <laughs> That's a lot of homes. So, so what? I mean, what can? How do you can't legislate people's households? Right. Right. So then, what do we do as a community? What is missing out of our community that we can take responsibility for, to where that problem gets significantly reduced? They took away boys and girls clubs. Boys club, boys and girls clubs. Yeah. We don't have that. When I was growing up, we had that for our. That's true for my age group. Right, right, right. And I feel like a lot of the people that I was in the Boys and Girls Club with, we became very successful. Mm. But we had something to do after school other than just an after school program. And I feel like those after school programs are just a placeholder for, oh, until my parent gets home. Right. So I feel like we need to bring back those Boys and Girls Club, those boys clubs, those mentors. In Atlanta, we had that situation. Um, I don't know if you're here for it, but during, um, when the incident with Rayshar Brooks took place, a lot of uh, the police kind of stepped back and let the citizens do their thing. And yeah. we saw the crime go up, yeah. saw a lot of violence go up. Um, and so, so last, I mean, let me ask you two more questions. Sure. Um, in that type of situation where the police scale back and the, they lead the citizens to kind of handle things on their own, do you think the black community, do you think we're prepared to have a community without law enforcement? Or do you believe that we absolutely need law enforcement, we just need better law enforcement or law, law enforcement that looks like us? I think we just need better law enforcement. Uh, I, so, as, so, as, so, as much trouble as, as, as we're capable of getting into, what are we going to do, police ourselves? <laughs> are we going to be better people to, right. to make sure that, you know, keep the, the crime rate down? Uh, I don't think so. Mm. And come to find out later, the sheriff is Joe Chapman, Walton County, by the way. Shout out to Joe Chapman. We're coming for you, brother. We're coming for you. <laughs> um, he told them to interrogate me, mm. uh, to try to find something, go fishing, uh, see if I had drugs in the car. That's what they were really searching for. Because right. obviously, I asked them before they conducted the search, like, right. uh, what are you looking for in specific? Right. And he said, some tools. I was like, well, I drive a truck. I got tools in my truck. Um, I'm a country boy driving, driving a truck. I got some tools. Right, 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 um, right. He was like, it's not a crime to have tools <laughs> right. in a pickup truck, you guys. And he said he's looking for a sawzall, and I was like, all right, I don't have a sawzall. Oh, okay. And it was like midnight, so I was just trying to go home, and I said, 
screw it, go for it. Listen, we had an amazing time today. We spoke to a lot of great, great people out here in the city of Atlanta. You got their thoughts on criminal justice reform, police reform, and overall what we could do, what type of steps we could take to actually really make a difference, you guys. Thank you so much for rocking with us today. Look forward to more of these street interviews. I'm Real Nathan Daly, and signing out. Peace.